Hello, thank you for coming back. I am so excited to show you two things today. The first is a backpack that I just finished yesterday. This is my own little piece of indulgence. I bought this panel for myself for my birthday present and I've been saving up these little pieces of this print as I was able to find them in the buy sell trade community of backstitch. If you don't know what backstitch fabric is, it is the opposite of the next thing I'm going to show you. So backstitch is indulgence and the next thing I'm going to show you is frugal because it's important to have balance in life. The reason why I'm showing you this bag is because I made it on the next thing I'm going to show you and the next thing I'm going to show you doesn't get a lot of love in the bag making community, but I'm a big fan. So this is the Guardian backpack by Lynn's Handmade. I'll have uh, links and timestamps in the description so you can fast forward past me blabbering on or you can find links to the pattern if you would like to make a bag like this yourself. I did every single part of construction of this bag with the exception of the embroidery here, which I did on my Baby Lock Flourish 2. Um, and everything else from the straps that are removable with this modification that I made to the pattern here, um, to the binding, to the interior, to the pockets, everything was done on this machine that I'm going to show you. This features cotton lycra, marine vinyl, um, thick vinyl from my punk broidery, waterproof canvas, and heavy woven interfacing and binding. And this machine didn't struggle a bit. The only trouble I had with this machine was um, kind of the awkwardness of the throat. That does um, leave a little bit to be desired, but I was able to get around it and produce a bag that I'm really proud of. Um, I do want to show you before I get too far into the machine the quality of the stitches. So let's see, you can see them here, right? Nice quality stitches. They don't have anything popping out. It shouldn't be out. This is a great little machine. Okay, so without further ado, I present to you a not industrial, not walking foot, not expensive, the sewing machine equivalent of Nickelback and Coldplay, the machine people love to hate, the Singer 4411. This little baby is less than $200. There's not a computerized thing on it to the what I can tell. It's bare bones, but it will cut through layers and layers and layers like nobody's business. There are some drawbacks and I'm going to get set up over at my sewing desk and then go over those with you kind of more up front. I'm going to show you everything from threading to um, threading the upper to the bobbin and then kind of going through the setting. But if you are looking for an alternative to an industrial or a semi-industrial just to get you through um, until you know whether or not you can afford one or whether bag making is for you, I would really suggest that you consider this machine. I'm not endorsed by Singer. I don't get anything from telling you about it. But just like when it's the Arbor Press video that I shared you, I think that it's important that we talk about alternatives. Not all of us have the resources to um, buy a thousand dollar sewing machines or some of us already have bought thousand dollar sewing machines and they can't justify more, right? So for me, the thing that I am really passionate about is embroidery and that's where I would like to take my business further. And so I did invest in, I never can do this whole camera thing. Um, I invested in that guy. That guy means that I have to make um, um, more rational decisions elsewhere. I can't, every machine can't be thousands of dollars, okay? So um, that's why I wanna go over this one with you. I think that you will like it. Um, and so let's stop teasing. Let's get into the meat of it. So this is the side of the machine with the hand wheel and it is very slippery and 
it doesn't feel very substantial or sturdy. So after a while, I find that my hand does get really tired if I'm hand cranking this, which is what I do when I start my stitches. And so I just use a thick rubber band. And sometimes I have quite a few of them piled on here. The ones from asparagus in the produce section are perfect. Um, and it just gives you that little extra bit of grip with your fingers that makes sewing with this machine a lot easier. At the top of the machine, we have the post where the bobbin will be wound, and then also the width setting. And I'm gonna tilt it so you can see that all of these are really well labeled. And um, the length you can see here, this is how you decrease or increase the length of your stitches. Not quite as many options as in some computerized machines. And then you'll notice that same thing here with your needle position. So here you only have left, center, and right. And your tension controls are here. I typically have mine just over uh, the four mark for the things that I stitch. This area here is where you will be winding your bobbin. When you're winding your bobbin, your thread will come through here. And then these are the various um, kind of routes that your thread will be taking. When we are threading our machines, we are wanting to make sure, and this is a super um, fancy way of showing you, our thread we want to have come off of the machine like this in the back. Sorry, I'm filming at our cabin <laughs> this weekend. Um, so kind of out in the woods. So if pine needles fall or chickens come into view, just ignore that. But um, this is how you want it to come off. So this is like a mullet, right? we don't want our thread to come off this way, which would be more like bangs. The exception to this is if you're using cross-wound fabric, or I'm sorry, cross-wound thread. And in that case, you'll want the narrow end of your thread to be here and the wider end to be here on the spool. All right, so let's go ahead and thread the upper threading. A couple of things, we need to make sure that this is in the highest position and that our presser foot is up. And if you don't have your presser foot up, that will not allow the thread to slip in between the tension discs and you won't have proper threading and proper tension. So slide it onto the post and put the cap on. And this is a one size cap, uh, unlike my brother and baby lock machines. This does not come with various sizes for the different sizes of spools. The top of the machine and the sides are all numbered to show you which order your thread or which kind of path that your thread takes. So we're going to go in through number one and then behind here for number two. We're going to come down for number three. It makes a U-turn for number four and goes up here to number five for another U-turn and back down around. I'm gonna drop you back down in just a second so you can have a better view of the following steps. Okay, so number six, it, you slide your thread behind this little area here, and then it's not labeled, but number seven is a little clip that's open on the right side and it's right in front of your needle. All right, now it's okay to go ahead and drop that presser foot so that you have a better um, kind of access to threading the needle. I'm going to go ahead and clip my thread. Okay, so if you've been spoiled by an automatic threader, then this is going to be a little bit irksome. But we want to make sure that we trim the tip of our thread so that we don't have any uneven kind of little stragglers that's going to make it more difficult. I'm going to turn this. What I find easiest, I'm going to drop this again. What I find easiest is to put my finger behind here and then I can see the color of my finger in the eye and for whatever reason that helps with my hand eye coordination and gets that threaded really easily for me. Now don't just pull this through really quickly because what will happen is that your thread will twist and could perhaps knot on itself and so I keep this here because I want my thread ultimately to be parallel to this needle and so you can see here that the thread is perfectly parallel to the needle rather than twisted or behind it. And now I'll lift up my presser foot 
and run the thread underneath the foot like this. Okay, let's go on to the bobbin. So it has to be wound in a particular way or inserted into the machine in a particular way. And so this now makes the letter P. And this is how you want your thread to go in. All right, so looking down on the machine, we're gonna pull this little latch and that will flip up the case. The case also shows you how it wants you to thread the bobbin through. I'm gonna be using green so that you can see it more easily as I start to stitch. We simply drop it in, not necessarily as quickly as I did just there. And then down here, I'm gonna see if I can get you there, is a little gap in between these discs or this little metal part of the bobbin case. We're gonna pull our thread off to the right and then we're ready to have it take up. So I'm not gonna put my cover back on yet. Instead, I'm gonna hold my upper thread with one hand and I'm going to turn my hand crank twice and then pull on my upper thread. Oops, hold on just a sec. Let me do that one more time. There we go. And then now our bobbin thread is through and go ahead and put the cover on without a risk of trapping that thread here off to the right. Our machine is now ready to stitch. Okay, so let's stitch through some pretty heavy materials here. I have some cotton lycra, some woven interfacing, not SF101, but a heavier quality. I have Decoville Light. I have marine vinyl and I have waterproof canvas. Let me get these lined up and we'll go ahead and stitch through them. Okay, I've got them under the presser foot and I'm lowering it down. I need to remember a couple of things. One, you have to either hold the thread tails and use the hand crank or hold the thread tails and use the foot to get started. I just always use the hand crank for the first two stitches. Uh, up here is the reverse if you need to backstitch. Something else to remember with this machine is that it does not default to the needle down position. And this will cause you problems if you go to turn and your needle isn't holding your work in place. So you need to make sure that your needle is in the down position before you pivot. I'm gonna show you that again. I've kind of learned the sound that the, the rhythm that the machine makes, and so I'm getting better at getting this in the needle down position, um, but even right now it's not all the way down. We want that sunk down in to act as a placeholder as we turn. Here's what happens if we don't. If we mess up and our needle is up like this and we go to turn, our piece comes away. You can see that it's doing an excellent job of going through that material. We're getting just a little tiny piece of our orange thread, um, which tells us that our tension is good. And here's the front side. Something else that I wanna mention that I really like about this Singer is that I, in, I appreciate that I can use the same bobbins. These are class 15 bobbins, and it's the same that my brother and baby lock machines take, and also my baby lock um, embroidery machine. And so it's, it's handy to have, um, not have to worry about finding which bobbin goes into which machine. I also like that there are all low shank machines and that these feet are interchangeable between them. I do have, and I haven't installed it yet, I'll do it on a different video, but I do have this walking foot attachment. I have not yet used it on this machine, but I am going to try it out and see whether or not um, it's an added benefit to this one. And I'll let you know how that goes in another video. The last thing I want to show you is stitching on this vinyl here, which while beautiful is kind of a pita. P-I-T-A, and if you don't know what that means, then Google that because I'm not going to say it out loud here. The thing that I have found that helps is this sewing machine oil from Singer. And I just put a little bit of the oil 
onto the surface of the vinyl and then rub it with my finger. If I'm using something that has cotton woven um, that I want to be careful about getting this, you know, keeping the oil away from, then I'll apply it with a cotton ball to protect that other surface. But it doesn't really kind of rub around too much or drip off and drip away, it stays put. I'm gonna lower my foot, hold on to my threads, give it two cranks, and away we go. quality of stitching that we have. I'm going to go through one more time and show you without that sewing machine oil so you can see the difference. Okay, now I've added a piece, a second piece of that thick vinyl from my punk broidery, this time without any sewing machine oil, and I've wiped off the foot. We have the marine vinyl, vinyl the Decaville light, the cotton lycra, the woven interfacing, and the waterproof canvas, and let's see how it goes. It's not going to be great because I don't have anything um, to act as lubricant here. But I'm going to hold on to my thread tails and give it two cranks and see what happens. It's doing better than I thought, but it's getting stuck. Let me show you. I'm going to drop you down so you can see what's happening on the back side. Sorry about the poor camera work, but see, it's pulling up here in the back. That's because it's not feeding through correctly. Let's fix that. When it doesn't work properly, look at what happens with our stitch length. Our stitches get dug down into here. There's almost no length between them because that material isn't moving through. And now it's causing it to do this kind of a motion. Okay, so I'm gonna do my best to bend it. Let's put a little bit of that sewing machine oil on there and find out what the difference is. All right, let's put it under there. I'm gonna rub it to make sure it's under there from the start. Hold my thread tails, give it a couple cranks, and let's go. makes a huge difference. Okay. Now, I don't know about you, but my regular baby lock and brother machines would not sew ever through this many layers and these different fabric types. It would just not, it would not be able to do that. Okay, so we've talked about the Singer 4411. I hope that it gave you some food for thought and maybe gave you something to consider in terms of an intermediary, intermediary, intermediate machine, sorry, to get you through until you're ready to invest in something um, more substantial and more permanent maybe. I don't know how long this machine is gonna last for me. I've only had it since Christmas. Um, it's now uh, July. So it just might be that that isn't going to last forever, but so far it's going strong. Um, I know I didn't cover any of the uh, like cleaning out or any of that kind of stuff. I can go over that if anybody's interested. If you have comments or concerns or questions, leave them in the comment section. That's what it's there for, and I'll get back to you as soon as I can. I look forward to seeing you all again soon, and um, I just want to say thanks. This, the channel has been growing and doing really well, um, and it's just the the highlight of my day when I'm able to interact with you um, on this channel. And I hope that sometimes it brings you some happiness too. All right, I'll be seeing you soon. Have a good day. Bye-bye.